Jordan Plain, you have been committed for sentence, having pleaded guilty to an offence of racially aggravated, causing harassment, alarm or distress on the 6th of August of this year. The context of, of your offending is that it arises out of civil unrest in many parts of the United Kingdom. The unrest has been generated as a result of the death of three little girls in Southport and the reaction from various parts of our society towards other parts of our society. Stemming from that incident, groups of protesters have gathered in many locations and on occasions they have clashed, sometimes using violence towards each other, sometimes towards the police, sometimes towards entirely innocent and unconnected people and their property. In a democratic society such as that which exists in this country, people are entitled to protest peacefully. They are also entitled to express their views, whatever their views may be. But each of those freedoms to protest and to speak have limits and boundaries. When a protest moves away from being peaceful towards being violent, then it becomes illegal and against the law. When speaking, whether directly to others or through social media platforms, what is said must not contravene the law. The law applies to everyone, no matter what colour, race, religion or political persuasion they are. There is no distinction. The law is there to protect everyone in our society, both in terms of personal safety, safety of businesses, safety of premises, whether people's homes or commercial properties. It is against that background that you invo involved yourself in a protest outside Leeds Art Gallery on the Hedrow on the 3rd of August. You joined with a pro-English Defence League group, chanting and gesticulating in the direction of a counter-protest who were demonstrating against racism. Your actions have been captured at least in part on closed circuit TV footage. You can be seen to climb on a barrier and start to make monkey noises and gestures towards the counter pro protesters whose number included people of colour. You were saying that they looked like monkeys. On several occasions you rubbed your lips and shouted rubber lips. You were standing alongside and in the same group as others who were making similarly racist and insulting comments. You then got down off the barrier. You started to imitate the manner in which Muslim people pray in order to mock their religion. This was grossly offensive racist language and behaviour and it caused alarm and distress to others, in particular to Miss Sawu, who has had the courage to come to court to tell me and others, including you, how she felt and how she feels. To summarise only, she was scared, anxious, traumatised by your behaviour. She was fearful of violence. She felt like she didn't belong in her own home city, the city of Leeds, where she has lived for all of her life, to the extent that she was scared to go to work for four days following this incident. She remains anxious and she remains worried about re returning to work and to her university. 
You were arrested on the 5th of August and then interviewed. You are now 30 years of age, and in particular, you have convictions in July of 2012 for racially aggravated causing fear of violence and criminal damage. Those convictions are an aggravating factor. You have further convictions as an adult, including for violence. What you have done cannot be viewed in isolation. It must be viewed against the background of unrest and disorder in the country. This was your contribution to that disorder. Your conduct, conduct and that of your group was designed to stir up racial hatred. It took place at a time when the social climate was particularly sensitive. By the 3rd of August, there had already been disorder in Southport, Manchester, Hartlepool, Aldershot, London, Liverpool and Sunderland. I will now turn to and follow the sentencing guidelines. In terms of culpability, I find that this falls into category A, since it involves the targeting of individuals by a group and it was a sustained incident. It also falls into category one for harm, since Miss Sawo and the people like her feared serious violence, not only on that day, but also on subsequent days. The starting point for a category 1A offence without the aggravating factor of racial aggravation is a high-level community order with a range of up to 26 weeks imprisonment. Given the context and the background of this incident and others around the country, I would have placed this offence at the top of the range. I must now consider the level of racial or religious aggravation involved and apply an appropriate uplift to the sentence in accordance with the guidelines. I am careful not to double count. I find that racial and religious aggravation was the predominant motivation for the offence and you were, assist, you were associated with a group which was promoting hostility based upon colour, race, religion. In those circumstances, I will increase the starting point that I consider to be appropriate. As I have said, your position is aggravated by your convictions for similar offending in 2012 for which you received a custodial sentence. At the forefront of my mind are the purposes of sentence which in this case are punishment and deterrence. In mitigation, I take into account that you pleaded guilty at the first available opportunity and you will receive full credit, that being one third. I also take into consideration your letter indicating your remorse. I take account of the comments of the probation officer that you are a single man living alone but with responsibilities for a child with whom you have regular contact. You say that this behaviour was caused by intoxication, but I note the similar convictions in the past. You are expressed by the probation service to be a high risk of reoffending. You are not in employment, although apparently fit and well. I will now turn to the sentence. Would you stand, please? Given the context in which this incident occurred and the sustained nature of your conduct, which was designed to stir up racial hatred at a time of heightened social tension, an immediate custodial sentence cannot be avoided. The sentence that I pass has been reduced by one third to reflect your guilty plea. The sentence is one of eight months imprisonment. You will serve up to one half of your sentence in custody before you are released on licence. If you fail to abide by the conditions of your licence, you can be returned to prison to serve some or all of the remainder of your custodial term. The victim surcharge will apply and I will make a collection order. 
Would you please take him down? <laughs>